Hey everybody, this is Ion Stuff. Today I want to show you how to use Chirp software to program your Baofeng UV5R radio. Chirp is a free open source software application that allows you to program various manufacturers of ham radios. They include um, Yesu, Kenwood, Icom, Woshan, Baofeng, those are the common ones that you might hear about. And you also see here I have two programming cables. I received one with my Woshan handheld and another one with my Baofeng UV5R. Now I found out that both of these cables are identical and I've used both to program my Baofeng and I've also used both to program my Woshan radio. So either one works. And this is my Baofeng UV5R. Uh, if you saw my last video, I showed you that I painted my UV5R. It used to be camouflage, and uh, now it's black. I used a, um, an epoxy-based paint, which works very well. I have a RHA-771 dual-band antenna. It's fairly long, it's about 14 inches, and you might think that it's a little too long or it might look kind of silly, but uh, out in the field having a little longer antenna will make all the difference. You might be able to make that contact that you probably would not be able to if you had a shorter or standard rubber ducky, which is maybe, I don't know, maybe um, eight, nine inches in length, but this extra length will actually help. So let's get started. To start programming you'll need to open up the side here and this is where to connect. It's the speaker mic connection. You would take this Kenwood compatible connector here and insert it there. Now when programming and plugging in your speaker mic as well, you want to make sure that this plug is pushed all the way in and snaps. A lot of people have issues with this when it's not plugged in all the way, it will not program or your speaker mic will not work correctly. So this has to be really tight. And of course the other end will need to plug into your computer. Here I am running the Chirp software. It doesn't look like much now, but keep on watching and you'll see more. If you want to download the current version of Chirp, you can go to http colon slash slash chirp dot danplanet dot com. This is the site and it will show you all the different equipment that it's compatible for or with. To name a few, Anytone, Kenwood, Baofeng, Pofeng, Pengseng, Icom, Yesu, Woshan, and so you might want to visit this site and see if your model number is in here and then you can use the Chirp software if it's compatible. Now I have two of the models here. I have the Woshan KG-UVD1P as well as the well-known UV5R by Baofeng. To download the software Chirp, click on the download link here And here you will find the different versions of Chirp. You can get it for Windows, Mac OS, Linux, and various forms of Linux. After downloading it, you can install it. Okay, let's get started using Chirp. 
what I'm going to do is show you how to enter in three entries. The first one is a frequency for monitoring only, such as law enforcement uh, frequencies. So if you want to monitor uh, your local police or sheriff's office, you can do that. Uh, the second uh, entry I'm going to teach you how to do is to program a simplex frequency. So this is radio to radio over simplex. And the third one is to program a repeater. And so before you get started, you want to make sure that the programming cable is connected to your radio and the radio is turned on and the programming cable is also connected to your computer with the USB cable. So we'll go over here to radio and click on download from radio and what it'll do is pull the image from your radio which um, has an image from your particular radio. And once you do that, you want to make sure you won't, don't really have to change the port. Normally, that's the standard. You just want to make sure that the vendor is correct and the model is correct. So both are correct in this case. Click OK. And now it's pulling the image from your radio to the software and then we can add the frequencies and programming to that image. So right now if you look at the settings it has all the current settings, advanced settings from your radio as well as what's in memory. So right now you don't really have anything in memory except memory zero, uh, memory location zero and in my case, uh, I don't really use location zero, and if it programs it into your radio from here, you won't really see it. So start with one, and it'll go all the way to, I believe, 127. So the first one is the monitoring frequency. So this is just for monitoring. So what you do is you go to row one, now this does not work like a spreadsheet, so you're going to have to click on the entry area and it'll open it up. Enter in the frequency and I am going to program my local sheriff's office and that's 156.210. Click on name and we'll call that Santa Clara County Sheriff's Office, SCCSO. Now you don't uh, really need anything here other than the duplex. You want to make sure the duplex is turned off and therefore you will not be able to transmit on this frequency. And that's very important. You do not want to transmit on a law enforcement frequency. Power, you want to leave it at high and also skip that set it to s and that means if you're if you enable scanning on your radio it will skip this channel so i don't prefer to scan this channel when i choose a channel i just want to stay with it so it's up to you you can turn off skip or skip this channel so the second channel we will program is a simplex channel and what I'm going to do is program the national simplex frequency which is 146.520 and we'll add a label and we'll just call that 146.520 so you'll know that is the national simplex frequency that does not have a PL or anything. You want to make sure that the duplex is set to none 
which allows you to transmit. Power is set to high. We'll set skip to S, meaning it'll skip. That's what I prefer. You can um, set it uh, to scan for those frequencies if you wish. So number three, we will program a repeater. And when you program a repeater, you'll need several pieces of information. The repeater frequency, the PL tone, as well as the offset. And that's either positive or negative. And the frequency of offset. Now, by default, or as a standard, VHF has a negative offset of 6 kilohertz. So let's enter in my local repeater frequency. It's 145.230 and I will label it N6NFI. It's a local repeater. And you will also need to set the tone mode to tone because you're using a tone. And we will select 100. That is the tone. You will also need... Now, this software is actually uh, has some smarts in it. It knows it's a VHF channel. It's a standard negative 600 kilohertz offset, so it already set that for me. It's negative here. It's 600 kilohertz here. It automatically set it for narrow FM. It's on high power, and I will select skip it for scanning as well. So that's all you have to do. Channel 1, we programmed it for monitoring a channel, and that does not allow you to transmit. It's a monitoring only or receive only, such as uh, if you had a scanner. So if you want to use this as a scanner, your transceiver as a scanner, this is how you would program it in Chirp. Channel number two, I programmed here a simplex frequency, which is the national simplex frequency of 146.520. You just need to set the duplex to none, and that will allow you to transmit in simplex mode and it's in high power as well. Four or five watts, uh, I believe it's set for four watts possibly for this particular transceiver. But here you go, you have all the examples that you need to program any type of frequency in your radio. After you've done that, you wanna be able to save it on your desktop. So I'm gonna save it to my desktop as UV5R-A. That'll be my dash A image. I already have one, so I'll overwrite it. Okay, before we program the radio with these three entries, let's take a look at the settings. Look at the basic settings. Squelch is 4. Now I've noticed on these Baofengs, the UV5R, these squelch levels don't really respond that well to what you enter in here, so I just left it at 4. Battery saver, it's at uh, 1 to 4, uh, which I'm not sure how it works. The backlight will stay on for 10 seconds. Uh, I will not enable beeping or roger beep. The timeout timer is 60 seconds, so your transmissions will disable if you hold down the push to talk button. Beyond 60 seconds, it will disable transmission. So if you accidentally sit on the key or your radio, it will not continue to transmit over a minute. Some repeaters have built-in timeouts, so you can adjust this accordingly. Uh, such as the um, N6NFI repeater that I'm using. It has a 90 second timeout repeater. And I am using the display name. I'm displaying the name. 
You can also set the display color. Uh, so for standby, I set it for purple. Receiving, it'll be orange. Transmit, it'll be blue. Advanced settings, I'm not using Vox, so I turned off Vox. I did enable dual watch, so you can have two frequencies up at the same time and it'll monitor both. Now I disabled uh, that because if you're trying to monitor one frequency, you don't want another frequency to interfere with the frequency you're trying to monitor. So I turn that off. And you can also enable automatic lock, key lock. Enable or disable the FM radio. I left that there. And let's go to other settings. Here on top, you'll see the firmware numbers here. You can check those out. These frequency ranges for VHF and UHF, you want to keep the way it is, or you'll lose capability if you modify it. The working mode. This is what channel it will power on to if the system resets, I believe. Um, so I'm going to go to 1 and 2 on there. So those are the settings for this particular radio. It'll be different with the different radios that you connect to the software. So that is settings. And your radio is turned on with the programming cable already connected. Go to radio, select upload to radio, and this will program your radio. Uh, of course, you want to make sure that your vendor and model is set. Now, it's already set because you selected the mo model and vendor when you pulled the information from the radio. So that sort of sets it for you automatically. So when we press OK, this will program your radio with what we have on the screen. Now sometimes you'll get an error if there is transmissions on the radio already. So let's try it again. Radio upload to radio. OK. OK. So you'll see the green line moving and it is programming your radio with what you see on the screen. Okay, that is done. And let's check out the radio. Okay, here's the radio after I programmed it. I'll turn it on. And as you can see, the top channel is channel 1, which is the Santa Clara County Sheriff's Office. Channel number two on the bottom, that is the national frequency, simplex frequency. Now before I uh, go over these channels here, I want to give you a little tour of the unit. You can see the um, this large button here, that's the push to talk. This bottom button here, press it once, that is the light. Press it twice, flashes, press it again, turns off. Now if you hold down this button here, it'll give you the squelch level. And you can adjust it accordingly. Of course that's the push to talk. This one up here. If you hold it down, well, it only works when it's not uh, when no one's transmitting. I will press the A B button to switch it to the national simplex frequency, so no one's transmitting. So maybe I can use this call button. Press and hold it down, you'll get this little alarm.
press it again, it turns off. But if you press it once, you'll get the FM radio. And you can change the FM frequencies by using the up and down arrows here. So I'll go back to a working frequency. That's the FM radio. Press call again. That turns it off. This light here indicates whether it's transmitting or receiving, I believe. AB button switches the channel from top to bottom with that little up arrow. Now I program this with with no dual watch. So it's not watching two frequencies at the same time. So whatever you choose using the AB switch, that is what you're going to monitor. Of course the little meter on the upper right, that's the battery state. And so, right now I chose channel 1 which is on top, SCCSO, Santa Clara County Sheriff's Office. That's the current frequency that is on and monitoring now. There was some uh, activity on it earlier, not anymore. So let me change it to the National Simplex frequency. Oh, let's go back to SCCSO. And this channel should be monitored only. So if you press the push to talk, this light does not turn on, meaning you're not going to transmit. It's a receive only. Let's change it to bottom frequency, 146.520, the national simplex frequency. Press the push to talk. You will see the transmit light turn on. So I got a little response there. Now let's change it to channel 3. Now what you can do is you can change it to channel 3 on any line, the top or bottom. Just using the up and down arrows here, you can go up or down. So I'm on the bottom frequency now. I just have to go up once using the up arrow. That changes it to N6NFI, my local repeater. And I can get some feedback here if I key up. That is programming the Baofeng UV5R using the Chirp software. And I gave you three examples. Monitoring frequency, simplex frequency, and a repeater frequency, how to program all of them. So I hope this video helps you in using Chirp. So check out their website, find out if your radio is compatible with the software, and it should work uh, fairly well. Thanks for watching. Please comment, please like, please subscribe, and I will have more videos coming up uh, in the future. Thanks again, and have a great day.